ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, on behalf of TCS, who is uh, the sponsor of this Speakers Forum, um, we're very thankful to have everyone come and join us. As those of you who joined us earlier have seen, we've had some incredible stories. And this next panel is one that I think our company can be very, very proud of. Our tradition goes back um, to the very beginning. The first expeditioneer of uh, Land Rover um, was, um, and not the first woman, but the first expeditioneer was a woman named Barbara Toy. And she took vehicles all over the world. Um, and it was a tremendous inspiration to um, other women adventurers um, throughout time. And so we have coined this talk uh, from Barbara Toy to Rebel Rally because the fabric runs right through. You see Daphne Green in the middle, who we've spoken about, who is uh, who is a competitor at Camel Trophy. So for us, it's very um, it's an important story as a brand. And I'd like to point one final thing out. Um, about the importance of women in our brand. Everything that you see around you um, and that you're enjoying today um, was part of a great team. Um, but every great team is a great captain. And I'd just like to put a thanks out to Katie Parker, um, who has put together this incredible event. If we could all give her a round of applause. I don't see her around, but she deserves it. I rest you, uh, let me tell you. So, in any case, I'm not going to moderate this, but I'm going to hand off to my friend and partner in and rebel competitor, Liza Barris, um, who can talk about the incredible tradition of Defender Land Rover um, and women through time. So, Liza, take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, hi, welcome everyone. Are you guys having a good day? Yeah, are you a little chilly? I didn't expect it to be so chilly when I came to Texas in October, but or November, November. But uh, but here we are. Um, a big thank you to JLR for having us out here this weekend, and um, really thrilled to be part of Destination Defender. Um, I myself am a huge fan of the brand and have been for a number of years as a. Uh, new and classic Defender owner, and I feel very much at home surrounded with all of you like-minded people who also uh, have taken to the brand in such a way. Um, so we're going to have a conversation today. I have these amazing uh, four partners in crime up here uh, who all, for various reasons, deserve to be sitting in these seats. We're going to have a little chat, and we're going to talk a little bit as Jeffrey sort of indicated about, um, you know, this this uh, adventurous spirit that has been woven through Land Rover from the very beginning and the role of women at the center of that. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about myself and we'll go down the line really briefly. Uh, my name is Liza. I am a producer for the Underpowered Hour, which is a Land Rover podcast you should all be listening to every Monday. Um, when I'm not doing that, I teach Pilates full time. Um, I have a nine year old daughter. I have reinvented myself many, many times over the years. But the thing that I am most proud of is in the last few years getting very heavily involved in competing in something called the Rebel Rally, which we're going to talk about. Um, and I uh, have thrown myself very, very far into the deep end there and it discovered that that is where I am the happiest. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that today, but I'm going to pass you on to my teammate, Jenna Fridley. Thanks, Liza. Uh, so my name is Jenna. Um, I am also a uh, hopeless Land Rover famous enthusiast and driver and owner. Um, teammates with Liza on the Rebel. And uh, my daily driver is a 1966 Series 2A 88 station wagon. And uh, my first car was a different 1966 Series 2A with a rare Expanda cab uh, roof, if any of you are that nerdy. Um, and I was thrilled to drive a new 2023 Defender in the rally this year, which was amazing and did great. And uh, can't wait to talk about it. Perfect. And then many of you know Daphne Green, but if you don't, you should. Daphne, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Daphne Green, and I am a Land Rover driving instructor. I got into being a Land Rover driving instructor when I was chosen 
as the first woman to represent the United States, with, along with my partner, Jim Sweat, who's also a Land Rover driving instructor who's here this weekend, and uh, to compete in the Camel Trophy. So it's a four-wheel drive, physical endurance adventure, combines running, swimming, climbing, canoeing, and technical four-wheel drive. There's a million applicants worldwide for 40 slots, so uh, it was indeed an adventure. We were down in Central America, and then headed the following year to the island of, to do the first east-west crossing of the island of Borneo in Indonesia. So, it's pretty special. Uh, my name is Laura Shacklett, and I'm from Dallas, and a daytime job, I'm accounts payable clerk, but my passion is being the events coordinator for Texas Rovers, um, com organizing their annual event, SCAR. And my first uh, Land Rover was a 2002 Silver Disco, and I got that in 2006, and I've been hooked ever since on Land Rovers. Yeah, awesome. And Sarah. Uh, my name is Sarah Caldwell, and I am partners in crime with Laura. I'm an accidental Land Rover enthusiast. I, I did not know what a classic Land Rover was, but um, when I saw my first one, I fell in love with it, it that day. Uh, so Laura and I have worked on the Barber Toy Tribute Trail Run. I, my passion is teaching and trail leading and introducing people to this wonderful outdoor sport that, you know, you, let, you and these Land Rovers would never take them off road. So that's been our passion. Love it. Um, so just a show of hands for all of you out there. How many of you have heard of Camel Trophy? Yeah, that's what I expected. Most of us, <laughs> most of us, how many of those of you have heard of Camel Trophy? How many of you were introduced to the Land Rover brand through Camel Trophy back in the day? Really? Wow, I'm so okay. No one. All right, there's one, one person. Some of you long before that, right? Long, long before that in your case, right, Bob? You're too old to even do the Now I'm feeling really old when she says, back in the day. And how many of you have heard about the Rebel Rally? Okay, pretty good, pretty good. And how many of you have heard about Barbara Toy? Slightly less, okay, perfect. So let me give you guys just a little bit of a background. Daphne gave us a really great sort of overview of what Camel Trophy is. Let me tell you a little bit about Rebel Rally for those of you who don't know. Rebel Rally is kind of a karmic twin in some ways to Camel Trophy in that it is an endurance event that really puts you to the test in the car. Um, Jenna and I competed last year in my uh, Defender 90, my classic NAS 1994 Defender 90 V8. Um, and that was a very, very different experience for us. Little to no air conditioning um, and a short wheelbase and a much older suspension system meant that by about two o'clock every day, she and I were pretty much rattled to death. But the Rebel Rally is an all women's off-road navigation rally. It takes place in California and Nevada every year. It is an eight-day event. And um, your, the whole point of it is it is a navigation rally with nothing but compasses and maps. No GPS, no cell phones. It is 100% offline navigation. Um, and what that means is that it is extremely challenging. But in a lot of ways, it shares a lot in common with what the spirit of Camel Trophy was back in the day. And most of you put your hand up and said that you knew something about Camel Trophy. Um, and so we're here to kind of share the parallels between all of those things. But really, neither of those events would exist had it not been for a woman named Barbara Toy. So we're going to get to her in a minute. But first, I'm going to ask a couple of questions. We're going to have a little conversation here. And so my first one is kind of for Daphne. Before you came to Camel Trophy, you came from more of an outdoorsy, adventurous kind of background. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So for me, uh, off-roading has always been a means to an end. So whether or not that's backpacking, rock climbing, ice climbing, whatever, going for a hike, if you're go going on a U.S. Forest Service or Bureau of Land Management road or local county road, you're going to be on a dirt road. So how do you do it safely? How do you make sure that your vehicle is okay? How do you take care of the land that we are so <laughs> blessed, particularly in the West, to have so much land? So that had been me so net. Campbell was not open to women 
uh, early on. I had heard about it back in like 1993, but it was not open to women. They opened it to women in 1994. I was lucky enough to be climbing in Alaska, so I couldn't do it then. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Me too. I agree. It's a great time. Uh, and then the following year, and so applied. <clears throat> and uh, so you need to train. And so again, my background, my partner's background, Jim Sweat, certainly had been in rebuilding at that point in time his his various vehicles. Uh, but I sort of had to start from square one. I had sort of the the orienteering background and had that sort of thing, but. Uh, the vehicle background, not as much. So we trained together. We went every other weekend to Colorado. And uh, then we, there's the international trials, which is a week-long competition in Istanbul, Turkey, where they, nail, they reduce your four-person US team down to two of us. So once we were identified as the, as the team, then we, again, trained quite frequently. We flew, courtesy of Land Rover, to Colorado and trained. So it was a phenomenal training experience, and it served us very well for when we arrived uh, down in Belize. I feel like anytime you are the only woman on any kind of thing, whether it's a working thing, whether it is a competition like this, there's a lot of added pressure put on women when they are become the token spokesperson for something like that. Did you feel that added pressure in that first year? Well, for clarification purposes, so I was the first woman to represent the U.S. In, in the year that I competed, in 1995, there was a woman from Spain and a woman from Germany. Um, I think what was so interesting to me at times was that yeah, the at the international trials, you're trying, you're a four-person team trying to reduce it to one. So you're competing really against each other, which was a little awkward. But I remember the team from the Canary Islands, like, body-checked me right out at one point. And I'm like, what the hell was that? And so they did it two more times, at which point in time then I pulled the team over and I said, look, I'm competing for a place on my team. If you do it to me again, I will take you out. <laughs> None. <laughs> and uh, they did it again, and then they were out. So, uh, you know, I think the pressure was is that, yeah, I mean, a partner Jen was newly married. The press, I had no idea. I had no idea. It's the lead story in the news in Germany every night. I had no idea that there would be, you know, Nick Dimbleby can speak to it, he's here with that lovely slideshow, that there would be hundreds and hundreds of reporters and cameras. And so, if I want to pee in the woods, let me just go pee in the woods. I don't need to have the camera capturing me peeing in the woods. You know, I don't need the rumor mill that, yeah, it's Jim Swan, we're going to be sharing a tent. Get out of here. He's married. We're averaging three hours of sleep a night. We have not showered in a month. That's not exactly a great recipe. So if there were enormous pressures, and you just try to remain focused, do what you knew. And it's, I always say it's that voice inside. And we always see it with women driving. You know, it's like, do you want to drive? No, I don't need to. I didn't ask if you needed to. I asked if you wanted to. And, and so it's that we can do it. And train well, trust in yourself, and you're good. Jenna and I, uh, we can, we can definitely um, commiserate with you about having to go pee in the woods every time on the Rebel Rally. That so many drones. There's always a drone right when you need to get out and go relieve yourself. Hundred percent of the time, those photographers are right there. Um, Barbara Toy was probably one of the first expedition, you know, individuals in the world. And, and a lot of us know the Oxford, um, you know, group, group of men with support that did some pretty incredible stuff. Barbara predated them, and she did everything solo on her own. And, you know, we can get into some stories about how it came about, but she was really a trailblazer decided she was going to get, go across the desert to Baghdad from London without, and she didn't even have an, own a truck when she had not sat to everybody. So the spirit of Barbara Toy is, you, you know, and we wanted to convey that was, you know, you can do it. If you imagine it, you can do it. And Land Rover um, was her vehicle. So it was an incredible experience to read about her 
and to bring that to the women in the Texas Rivers group. And we're really excited to hear how she's getting what she deserves, you know, as far as recognition in what she did. Solo travel up until her 90s, circumvented the, the globe twice the last time when she was 89. I'm hoping that I can still drive my truck. <laughs> When I'm 70. <laughs> it's, it's incredible to read what she's done. And if, if you don't know much about her, at least look up the Wikipedia article on her when you leave here today. She really did circumnavigate the globe. Uh, her first vehicle was a series, it was an 80 inch named Pollyanna, um, which I have seen in person. There it is, right there. That's Barbara right there. Uh, she was an amazing individual, and um, it's phenomenal to see at the club level when women get involved in off roading and then they hear about Barbara, it's sort of this feeling of like, where was she all my life? This was a woman I needed to know about, to look up to, and her story deserves to be told, for sure. Yeah, when we did it in 2016, we, actually, we were surprised. We actually had nine ladies sign up. Of course, they were driving their spouses' rovers, but then the next following year, we had three ladies who purchased their rover. From just that experience to feel comfortable to be driving, with other ladies and then Sarah was the trail leader and guiding and spotting because I think that makes a big difference. Women feel a little bit more comfortable and uh, and you listen better. I think women listen better than men, no offense, but I think I think ladies actually listen better to spotting and because it's that empowerment, that support. Uh, that's really interesting you say that. On the Rebel Rally, Emily Miller who founded it always says that um, women tend to be more cautious when they take on something like this than when they take on a new sport. And women want to know everything they can about it before they feel confident kind of taking off on their own. And guys, you tend to be a little bit more like, eh, we'll figure it out as we go. Women would like to kind of have it figured out before we, before we get out there. And a lot of our trainings that Regina and I have done Definitely, you notice that out there. The women want to kind of analyze and understand what they're getting into before we get out there. Daphne, do you think that that is? Yes. <laughs> oh, maybe not your experience? I have to say Daphne's probably not the role. She's the exception. No, I do it as an instructor. What do you think? Sure. I mean, I, you know, everybody's trying. I mean, we just had a, a, a man, we were out on the, on the, uh, course out here and you know he's like uh, am I doing okay am I holding anybody up so it's like stop just enjoy your time and and that's what you're always trying to do but you're absolutely right women are always worried one time the man drove in the morning and the woman was driving in the afternoon she suddenly stopped the vehicle she looked back and she said Bob her husband would you shut up <laughs> he had not said a word he hadn't said a word and I looked at her and I said he didn't say a word. She said, I know, but I know exactly what he's thinking. <laughs> but, but I do think, I mean, it's, yes, gross generalizations. I appreciate the fact that somebody is going to be thoughtful and understanding and respectful of a vehicle that is not theirs when they climb into it and want to understand what does it feel like to gently touch that throttle and gently use those brakes. That, that's a good thing. Because we all know when everything hits the fan, you want to have that background. You don't want to just, you know, you want to, and I think, you know, it's, everybody, if you have children, yeah, I, how many times have we all made that mistake at seven o'clock at night? Let's go down that road. Oh, and then it's midnight, and everybody's really angry. Like, no, this was not a good choice. So sometimes you need the responsible party in there. Um, but I truly think that Barbara Toy to be able to just imagine what she went through in some of those countries. I mean, it is beyond me. And so she is such a role model for all of us. When we start to feel like, oh no, I can't. Barbara Toy could, so we can't, you know? Yeah. And to add to Barbara Toy, when you're saying she went to all these other countries, she had to send a letter to the King of Saudi Arabia to get permission to drive there. Um, and so she did. She had the letter with her she had to keep. And then there was a young guy she had to hire that said, because they were driving on the opposite side, that way it looked like she wasn't driving, but she was driving. <laughs> <laughs> and to add that, she was the only person that had ever met his hair. Um, so, I mean, she just, 
she just went for it, you know, um, whatever she decided. And, and, and the original story of how she decided to do this, she, you know, she was, she was from Australia, lived through the war in London after she separated from her husband. And she really didn't know what to do with herself, so she decided she'd be an actress, and she failed at that. Then she became a playwright. And she actually had some success with that. She was in a bar, which a lot of stories start in bars. <laughs> a lot of them start in bars. And having a, a, a heated di discussion with some friends. And I, one of the gentlemen said, you know, well, you can't do that. You know, you can't travel across the, the desert. And she, her response was, well, I, I am. I am, I'm leaving in a couple weeks. Watch me. And she didn't have a truck. She didn't have a plan. But she decided that she wasn't going to be held back. Yeah. You know, for any reason. And she had a real love of the desert. So, and, so, yeah, so much history. Again, read her story. It from, is inspirational. From what I know of the five of us up here, I think we all have a love of the desert. <laughs> With Camel Trophy, it's, um, you're covering about, uh, what is it? Uh, 2,500 miles, so we went through five countries, Belize, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and back to Belize. And at the start, it's 30 hours of nonstop physical competition, and then you come together in those teams, and you've got to get from point A to point B together, because you have to winch and do a ton of stuff to move everybody through. And then at the end, there's another 30 hours. So at one point in time, so. Jim and I were, it was this competition, Jim, we had to, he had to run three miles one direction and pick up a clue, like a, some sort of clue. I did the same the other direction. Jim had to pick up a tire and wheel and carry that another two and a half miles. I had two jerry cans, uh, so 20 gallon jerry cans full of water. So I mean, you pick them up and you're like, oh, okay, well I've trained for this. But, you know, get two and a half miles, you're like, oh, this is not going to happen. So I just kept thinking, think of those women in Africa. How did they do it? So then I'm like, all right, maybe I can put it on my shoulder or on my head. And, and then at a certain point, you're just like, I can't do this. And, th and then I thought, maybe I can empty them. <laughs> oh, so nobody had said you couldn't, but then I thought, oh, Jim's my partner, and we have trained so hard, I can't, if we get disqualified for doing that, so I sort of let a little go. But, but I think, <laughs> at, that, at that moment, the rules. Just bend them. at that moment, it was like, all right, you got to dig down. And I don't care whether or not you're backcountry skiing or you're in that Land Rover and you're like, the biggest, I mean, you put it perfectly, your, your biggest critic is yourself. Oh, they're thinking, they're talking. No, they aren't, they don't care. Stop, you're good. You've trained for it, you've trained for months. You know, at one point, then I'll be quiet. At one point, like, I call the coach and I'm like, TC, I, I can break the bead, I've got the tire off, I put a new tube, I got the tire back on, and I did it in seven minutes, which for me, I'm like, that's pretty damn good. He's like, well, that's great, Debbie, but we really like it under five. I took, I took the tire iron. I blew it so dang hard. I'm like, I hate this. Why did I say yes? Why am I doing this? Why, why, why? It's like, you got to get that out. You got to be human because that's how you're feeling. And then sort of like relationships. And then just stop. Just stop and figure it out. And you'll get it. And you'll move on you have had to deal with or that you wish you could dispel in the average person? Any stereotypes? Share those here. <laughs> Maybe not. Good question. Great question. I think um, one of the things I think as women drivers, you, you, you sort of touched on it in our earlier question about, you know, are you, car are you carrying a torch? Well, a lot of people, their off-roading is more in a, a, a park environment, and there's other brands of vehicles there, and there are other people doing other things. And as a woman in the driver's seat, you come up to a very tough trail that these people are very familiar with, and when you see 20 of them sitting around at the base looking at you like, you know, you're not going to, you can't do this. <laughs> You're, there's no way. You start to maybe internalize that, and then you're carrying 
a torch for the Land River brand because you want to prove that the Land Rover is much better than what they're driving. <laughs> and you're also carrying the torch for women, you know, because they're looking at you and saying, oh, she can't do that. And I think I can point to several where, you know, I made it. I might have gotten stuck. Uh, I can remember a Jeep. Yeah, the Jeepers were always at the bottom. <laughs> and the, the trail is called Angry Jeep for the specific reason that it's, it's a tough one and it's a blind, you know, where you're tipped up and can't see ahead of you and you probably need a spotter and you can't see the spotter. So, um, you know, it's a, one of those where everybody's yelling, just give it more gas, you'll get over it, just give it more gas. So, yes, I feel like we do put that pressure on ourselves um, as women, you know, and Land Rover drivers because a lot of people out in the field don't really think much of Land Rover until they actually see them perform and they perform far better than anything I've ever seen. I was just, I was just gonna say that I'm gonna stop you for a minute because when you say I didn't fail, well, right there's a judgment. <laughs> you, you, you were out there. You're not, you're not failing. I got stuck. You got temporarily detained. You're sitting here right now. Like, again, stop the judgment. And that's the thing. Uh, Today, I got pulled out twice. Who cares? I learned something. That's the key. Yeah. I love that. That's the key. Yeah.